CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Presider over our excursions into the world of the macabre. Beyond the world as we see it, there are other worlds, certainly. The dark world of the mind, of the spirit, and probably distant worlds and life on planets throughout the universe. It is such a world that we will visit because of a strange discovery by a psychiatrist named Philip Sargent, 40 years old, and thought to be as normal as you and I except for what happened to him. Sergeant's friend, Paul Dennison, looks in disbelief at him. I'm sorry, Phil. It makes no sense. What would convince you that it's true? Proof. I'm an astrophysicist, so my mind isn't closed to the mysteries in space, but you're speaking of the intangible. Interest, Tar, isn't intangible. It's a small planet in the middle galaxy. It exists. I've been there. It is ruled by an immortal named Lord Z, who is in charge of the redistribution of souls. Phil, I've had astronomers search for Intrastar. It's a fiction. It exists only in your mind. Our mystery story... Voyage to Intrastar was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Roy Windsor and stars Norman Rose. I'll be back shortly with Act One. your do-it-yourself project, Grossman's can help. With over 82 years of know-how, Grossman's offers everything you need to repair, remodel, or protect your home with savings like these. Grossman's has a large selection of paneling to fit your taste and budget. Fix up now with paneling and everything you need to do it right at a special price like pewter paneling, only $3.99 a panel, a $12 saving on a 12 by 12 room. Shop Grossman's for super savings. When you do Items available at Grossman Boston Area Stores. And so it seems we travel on this occasion to an unknown planet, Intrastar, in the middle galaxy, discovered, or so he says, by a psychiatrist named Philip Sargent. Far-fetched? You don't believe in the possibility of a science fiction experience? Then how do you explain away UFOs or those black holes infinite miles away at the edge of the universe? Both are facts. Their explanations are not. Therein lies mystery, the kind we explore. One person who rejects such talk is foolishness is Dr. Sargent's housekeeper, Mrs. Buckley. Concerned about him, she speaks to Paul Dennison. 
I hope you don't mind me taking the liberty, Mr. Dennison, but you're... What liberty, Mrs. Buckley? Oh, busting on you like this. It's it's about... about the doctor. Well, is something the matter? Has anything happened to him? Oh, no, sir. I mean... Oh, yes, sir. Oh, uh, please, sit down. Oh, just for a minute. I-, I told him I'd be out for an hour. Uh, if you don't mind, please tell me why you've come to see me. What are you worried about? Well... I think there's something wrong in his top story, as they used to say. Why? I saw him a few days ago, and he seemed normal to me. I dare say. But it's at night. He begins to be funny. Funny? In what way? Well, it's about Mrs. Sargent that was, poor dear. Oh, yes, that was tragic. Oh, her being killed in that accident, and he loved her so. That shook him up so bad, I... I think his mind is wandering. He talks about Mrs. Sargent? He visits her. Now, Mrs. Buckley... I'm not lying. That's what he says. Well, she's still in his thoughts, of course. Always will be. That's all he meant by visiting with her. I wouldn't worry. Dr. Sargent's had a shocking experience and he's overworked. He brought me her special recipe for a lemon... Icebox cake. I don't know what you're talking about, Mrs. Buckley. He what? He did. He told me one morning just how to make it. And he said his wife told him how she used to make it. The cake was his special favorite. You have to use fresh lemons. Uh, Please, please. Dr. Sargent gave you the recipe after learning it from his wife? Yes, sir. That's what he said. Tell Mrs. Buckley to buy fresh lemons and heavy cream, and then you Thank you, thank you. I understand why you'd be upset. Well, it's given me the creeps, Mr. Dennison. Let me be sure of this, Mrs. Buckley. Dr. Sargent told you that he visits his dead wife? That's right. Any time he feels like it. When he's asleep, that is. Dr. Sargent's a brilliant psychiatrist. I'll see him and decide if he needs medical attention. Oh, you... You won't say I've been here. No, no. I, I don't lie. And I don't like sneaking behind a person's back. So Understood. I... Good night. How was the cake, Paul? Oh, great, Mrs. Buckley, some cook. This is Helen's recipe. Lemon icebox. Oh. Well, Mrs. Buckley followed it beautifully. She's never tried it before. I brought her the recipe. You did? Helen went over it with me several times. Of course, we couldn't write it down. Uh, pardon me? I said that... I heard what you said, Phil. Now explain what you meant. Well, you won't believe me. Try me. I'm not without imagination. When I sleep, I dream. And when I dream, I find myself with Helen. That sounds normal. And in one of those dreams, you remembered Helen telling you how she made this kind of cake. No, I I was never in the kitchen. I don't think that I could fry an egg. The kitchen secrets were Helen's. It was in a dream state on Intrastar that she told me to tell Mrs. Buckley how to make this kind of cake. And Mrs. Buckley did. Paul, I made a discovery of unimagined importance. Tell me about it. Man is flesh, blood, and soul. All right? Mm, We'll assume it. Soul is a little vague. Well, mind is soul. You will admit that the mind is man's unique organ, that with it we open imagined worlds through dreams. Yes. Go on. Well, what I've discovered, perhaps because of my intense preoccupation with Helen, is that a dream is an actual experience of the soul outside one's body. You lost me. All right, let me give you an example. You fall asleep and dream of murdering someone. What I maintain is that the soul in the mind becomes a disembodied murderer, not of another real person, but of that person's subconscious. The soul set free in a dream commits murder. It seems to be on another person. Actually, the murder committed affects only the victim's subconscious. Do you understand? No. That sounds like gobbledygook. You're saying that in a dream, the soul leaves the body and plays out a murder or whatever else is dreamed? Me and a movie star, me running for a touchdown? Yes, yes, that's right. 
And what you experience in a dream affects the person about whom you dream. The man you want to murder becomes more wary. The movie star, more vain. That's how character is built. And that is why, uh, in a negative way, I learn so much about my patients from their dreams. Uh Uh-huh. That's an interesting theory. Crazy, of course. (laughs) I said that you wouldn't believe me. Now, I will visit Helen tonight. Paul, have you any idea where she is? Well, her soul, if there is such a thing, is one of two places, I expect. Helen is a freed soul in her ghostly body on Intrastar, a small planet in the middle galaxy. Oh, boy. Anything else? Lord Z rules it, and a Prince Baltos assists him. Doing what? Redistributing souls to the unborn. Paul, do you realize what this means? Yes, I think it means you're really in need of a rest. It means that immortality and reincarnation are facts. You are immortal. So am I. Ah, that's nice to hear. I'm also mortal and sleepy, and I'd better say good night. You don't accept anything that I've said, huh? I'm afraid not, old friend. To me, to put it bluntly, you sound kind of crazy. What would satisfy you that I am as normal as I ever was? A theory is a theory until it's proved. You can't do that. I'll bet the astronomers where I work can't even find this intrastar of yours. And if they did, you still couldn't prove that it's the gathering place of souls awaiting redistribution. A ghost is intangible. If it can't pick up anything, how could it bring something to Earth to prove your theory? Yes. Yes, that point has bothered me, too. Dream on. But don't take any of this seriously, Phil. No one else could. Mrs. Buckley and Paul. Well, you expected that, didn't you? Well, yes. How are you, darling? For a soul in limbo, happy enough, and curious about what will happen to it when I'm assigned to someone unborn. Of course, there are distractions on Infrastar. I float around as we all do, meeting one another. What do you talk about? What we were on Earth, what we did... The person we loved. What might happen to us next. Now, this is a beautiful place. The light doesn't vary. It's always dim and soft. Still, this little planet supports vegetation. And the rock formations are unusual. I remember studying botany and geology, but I can't identify anything here. Have you made any friends? I've been... Singled out by Prince Bartos, who, I must say, overdoes his affection for me. Oh? <laughs> Don't be jealous, darling. I'm just a shade. Bartos likes me because in 600 B.C., he fell in love with a beautiful Greek woman, descended to Earth, and lived with her until Zeus found him out. End of Bartos on Olympus. He was consigned to Intrastar. And you remind him of that Greek beauty. <laughs> so he says. A long time. 2,500 years. Helen, no one believes me. I've discovered that immortality is a fact and no one will believe me. Oh, be content with the discovery, Phil. There's no way to prove it. Yes, I know. That's what Paul said. But there has to be a way. If I could... Well, if I could take something back to Earth with me... Your soul is with me. But not your body, darling. I know that. May I intrude, my dear Helen... You have, Prince Baltos. Hello, Prince. Your widowed husband sounds disgruntled. You should be pleasant to me, Dr. Sergeant. Don't forget, you will arrive one day on Intrastar for the reassignment of your soul. Like a number of remarkable men before you, you have discovered that man's soul is immortal. They could not prove it, nor will you. I'm not so sure. I am. The secret of immortality is all that binds the human race together. Remove the secret... And there'd be anarchy on Earth. 
be content to know that you know the truth. And now, don't you think you've overstayed your visit? It's five o'clock in the morning. Go back, Phil. What is it that disturbs your conscious mind, Doctor? A dog barking. Sergeant has discovered that immortality is a fact, and that after death, human souls ascend to intrastar in the middle galaxy. Can he prove it? He will try, as we will find out in Act Two. Laxatives work in different ways. That's why you should know about X-Lax pills. Overnight, X-Lax pills gently stimulate your system's own natural rhythm, your own natural rhythm. And that makes all the difference. So try X-Lax pills for gentle overnight relief. X-Lax pills for occasional use only as directed. Now you can soften hard, callous skin without painful cutting or scraping. Apply stainless Dermasoft cream to your feet as directed. Insist on Dermasoft cream. Here's your big chance to save a small fortune. Now through April 14th, J.C. Penny diamonds are on sale for 20% off. A magnificent collection of diamond rings for men and women. Diamond earrings, pendants, and pins. All with the brilliance and clarity you find only in fine diamonds. And all at 20% off. Now through April 14th. This is What in the world happened in April? Brought to you by your local Navy recruiter. April is Admissions Day for Maryland, admitted in 1788 as our seventh state. And Louisiana, admitted in 1812 as our 18th state. George Washington was sworn in as our first president in April of 1789. And the first U.S. Congress began regular sessions at Federal Hall, New York City. In April of 1860, the first Pony Express run was made from Missouri to California in 10 days. The motto, In God We Trust was first stamped on all U.S. coins in April of 1864. The Navy's first submarine, the USS Holland, was commissioned in April of 1900. Navy Commander Robert E. Peary and Matthew Henson reached the North Pole in April of 1909. What in the World Happened in April is brought to you by your local Navy recruiter who will answer your questions about Navy opportunity. Or in the continental United States, call 800-841-8000, toll free. In Georgia, 800-342-5855. Navy. It's not just a job, it's an adventure. This tale of the macabre has taken us to Intrastar, a planet in the middle galaxy, because an unusual man, psychiatrist Philip Sargent, has discovered that in the dream state, his soul travels disembodied. To the star where the souls of the dead await distribution into the unborn. Fantastic? Perhaps. But there are no limits to what the mind can foresee. It is man's unique attribute. Away from Earth, you can be sure that there are other minds. One of them is that of Lord Z, the ruler of Intrastar. May I remind you, Prince Baltos, what happened before? Or why you were consigned to me here? I was passionately in love with her, Lord Z. But you are an immortal. I was born of a human. And I had human feelings. Mm, and you still have them. But, my dear Baltos, your feeling for Helen Sargent is not a feeling for a human being, but for her waiting soul... A soul waiting for us to place in someone unborn. How could you possess a shade? I love Helen, and I'd like to do something to please her. Well, then make a careful selection of the unborn in whom her immortal soul will be placed. What would please her most would be something I could do for her husband, Dr. Sargent. He'll join us here one day. Do the same for him. He wants to prove that immortality is a fact. That cannot be allowed. But even if he does prove it, no one will believe him. I agree with you. 
but it's a risk that is forbidden to all of us. Humans already have a good idea that there is such a thing as immortality. The body is a temporary shell which houses the soul. If life and death become unimportant, civilization would degenerate into anarchy. That cannot be allowed. I urge you not to do anything foolish, Baltos. Good breakfast, Mrs. Buckley. Starts the day right, my old father used to say. <laughs> Let me have your cups. Got to keep the machinery oiled. He always ate a hearty breakfast. Made us eat one, too. Have a cup yourself, Mrs. Buckley. With you? Why not? I'd like to talk with you. Uh, Helen sent you her love. <laughs> Dear, did I startle you? Oh, if you're going to talk like that, Doctor, I... In your way, you love Mrs. Sargent as much as I did. And still do. Nothing wrong with that, is there? She couldn't send me her love. No way. Ah, but she did. You see, I was with her last night. Oh, Doctor, please. Don't you know how you sound? What if anybody heard you? I'm sorry I upset you, Mrs. Buckley. You just mustn't talk to me that way, Doctor. Like you were possessed of the devil. He speaks in many tongues, you know. So does God. Well, we won't talk about Helen anymore, but really she did send you her love. Oh, that's very nice, I'm sure. I don't want to go into how she sent it. Through me? From Intrastar? Oh, may the Lord protection drive such crazy notions from your head. Oh, please... Don't talk to me any more about those visits and that that planet you say you visit. You know that's just plain crazy. Now who? Ah, oh, yes, it might be Dennison. Hi. Ah, uh, Paul, come in, come in. Eh? I've uh, got a fire going in my study. Come on in. <sighs> it's nippy out there. Uh, Phil. I've had astronomers at all our stations and a space station itself trying to track down that planet, Intrastar. There is no such planet. Paul, Intrastar exists. Do you realize the implication of what you've said? Yes. In spite of scientific proof to the contrary, I insist that Intrastar does exist. And the implication of that? Uh, that I've cracked up, huh? Exactly. Cracked up. Or about to. Well, you know what gossip is. Mrs. Buckley listens to your your dreams about Helen. She speaks to her daughter. The talk becomes exaggerated. It spreads to me, to my wife, and so on. And then it becomes an accepted fact. Dr. Sargent has gone over the edge. Yes, and that's too bad. Paul, I'm still normal. You don't know that. I wish you'd consult a doctor for his opinion. Well, that's presumptuous. It's out of but... the question. I am a doctor. I know myself. Ah, you're wrong. But I'm willing to live with it. Others may not be. Mrs. Buckley? She meant it when she said she might have to leave. That'd be a loss. Then there are your friends and your patients. The opinion is growing, Phil, that you have become abnormal. Paul, my discovery is a fact. It is not. It's a fiction like Intrastar. So are your visits with Helen Soul. Just think of what that last sentence sounds like. Your visits... With Helen's soul. Visits, Phil? Doesn't that sound schizophrenic? Now, be honest with me. Well, yes, it does. Well, then? I'll say no more. The discovery I've made, I'll keep to myself. Just forget it. Oh, no. No, Paul, I can't forget it. It's a reality. But I'll say no more until I can prove it. My dear Helen. Why, Prince Bartos, how nice of you to pay me a visit. The last time Dr. Sargent visited you, I said that from his tone he sounded disgruntled. Remember? Very well. He was always jealous of anyone who looked my way twice. You mean everyone. That, of course, includes me. Oh, how can you have any feeling for me when I'm just a disembodied soul? Odd as it may seem, I can I have a rather clever plan in mind. Oh? One day, that fine soul of yours will be placed in someone unborn. I'll see to it that it is placed in a human who will grow up in a striking body. 
She will be a stunning woman. Oh, that's nice to know. I will come to Earth and marry you. And what if I don't love you? You will. Meaning that you can explain love? Well, no. But I'll be myself and an immortal. And I look as I do now. You don't find me repugnant. Oh, no. I think you're most attractive. That's seeing you as Helen Sargent. When I'm someone else, I don't know what I'll think. I'll face that question when I come to it in 20 years or so. Now, would you look on me more favorably if I did you a service now? Oh, if you could help Phil, Dr. Sargent, I'd be very grateful. That's just what I propose to do. I mentioned the idea to Lord Z, who forbids it. But I really am an immortal. So what could he do to me? Oh, I'd have no idea, Prince Bartos. Your husband, a man and a mind that I respect a great deal, faces a dilemma. He knows that immortality is a fact. Without my help, he can't prove it. I will give him my help. You're defying Lord Z. He's an indulgent old gentleman. He'll forgive me. Lay the king on his side, Phil. There's no way you can win. I have one move, and my pawn becomes a queen. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, stupid of me to lose my knight. Good chess game, otherwise. And you did win the first game. Yes, but you won, too. Losing a chess is a dreadful experience. It proves you're stupider than your opponent. I find that hard to accept. Ah, uh, expecting someone? No. Well, Mrs. Buckley will see who it is. Oh, it's late. I'd better be running along. Oh, Excuse me for interrupting. Yes, doctor. who is it? Uh, well, there's a Mr. Ballas or Blath or so, something like that who says you know him. And could he come in and see you? Who? Uh, Blotus. Oh, I don't know. Uh, nice looking man, about your age. Baltos. Now, that sounds right. Uh, Baltos. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, well uh, uh, show him oh, in. Oh, yes, sir. It's pretty late to be calling. I'll leave. Oh, no, no, you won't, Paul. Uh, Paul, do you know who... Baltos is. Good evening, Dr. Sargent. Good evening, Prince. Paul. Paul, this is Prince Baltos from Intrastar, uh, Paul Dennison. Good Lord. How do you do, Mr. Dennison? Uh, sit down, Paul. Well, Prince, this is an unexpected pleasure. I am here because of Helen. She hasn't been reassigned. No, no, not yet. Soon, perhaps. How different all this is from Greece before the birth of Christ. Marvelous. Mankind has improved his condition on Earth. Uh, you, sir, claim to be a Prince Baltos from Intrastar. I do not claim it. I am. And Intrastar is a fact. Not to my astronomers. Well, that means nothing. They are finite. Only their souls are infinite. And a few of them, in a disembodied state, have visited my planet. Dr. Sargent is one of those rare souls. You have told Mr. Dennison... Oh, yes, everything. And he thinks you're a lunatic. That's right. You, you sit there and tell me you're from another planet. And I'm a god. And that interest... Are... Well, tell me more. Lord Z is the ruler. I am his aide. Intrastar is the gathering place. A way station, if you will, for all the human souls... They arrive there after death for redistribution in the unborn. Reincarnation is a fact? Yes. I don't believe it. Why should you? After all, as a scientist, you must have proof. I will furnish that tomorrow night. Shall we say the same time? Will you really? I promised Helen I would. What would satisfy you, Mr. Dennison? A plant not found on Earth? A kind of rock? Unknown in this world? Uh, you'll excuse me, Phil. No, wait just a moment. Please answer the prince. Prince? A god from a fictitious planet named Intrastar, the gathering place for departed souls. For all I know, Prince Baltos is one of your patients. Well, have your fun. I'm going home. They're both as nutty as a fruitcake. <laughs> and this is a detached man of science? Well, a really big idea is hard to comprehend, Prince. Mankind's condition has improved on Earth, but his mind is still a victim of archetypes and superstition. Why? Because of fear of the unknown. 
I no longer have that fear. Of course not. You know the truth. Shall I proceed with tomorrow night's visit? Yes, please do. If it will not place you in danger. There's a risk, but not a serious one. I'm grateful to you, Prince Baltus. And Denison will be here, I assure you. Yes. He and your housekeeper are the ones that need convincing. Until tomorrow, then, I will say good night. Do not visit Intrastar tonight. Lord Z is very inquisitive. Mrs. Buckley, do you know who my visitor was? Prince Baltus, a god. Oh, you're talking foolish again, Doctor. It's the truth. Can I bring you a cup of tea? Yes, that sounds like a good idea, but I'm keeping you up very late, Mrs. Buckley. Oh, I don't mind. You just settle down. I'll boil some water and bring you some tea. Excuse me, Doctor. Did that Mr. Baltos let himself out? I, I didn't hear him go. He said good night in the study and vanished. Huh? Disappeared into the air. Dr. Sargent's belief that the soul in a dream state actually experiences what it dreams about. It's hard to swallow. And his visits to his wife's soul on Intrastar might strike you as even more incredible. Well, so did the idea of landing on the moon. For myself, I intend to keep an open mind about the doctor's incredible discovery and his proof of it, which I expect we'll hear when I return with Act Three. Good morning. Good company. Good to the last drop. Maxwell House. Maxwell House. Coffee you can count on. Always smells good. Always tastes good. Always good to the last drop. Maxwell House. Good coffee. Good to the last drop. Maxwell House. This is Jack Klugman. As national chairman of this year's Easter Seal campaign, I've seen the wonderful things that happen every day in Easter Seal centers. A stroke victim learns to walk and talk again. A disabled youngster learns to feed and dress himself. A deaf child is taught to communicate. Children and adults rebuild their lives with the help of Easter Seals. But they can accomplish only what you make possible. Please, give to Easter Seals for handicapped children and adults. I smoke pot all the time. I love it. That was no Harvard Square freak. That was a member of the great and general court of Massachusetts. A young Democrat who spoke freely about his regular use of the irregular weed. One of several legislators who talked frankly of the politics of pot in an exclusive survey for the April issue of Boston Magazine. We figured it was high time you got the real dope on what the general court thinks about marijuana. So Boston Magazine set out to find out where their heads were on the question of legalization. What we found were a lot more answers and a lot more heads than we expected. This pot pole just might blow the lid off Beacon Hill. It certainly brings a new meaning to the term smoke-filled room. Read it in the April issue of Boston Magazine. Ask for it now at your newsstand. And if the man at the newsstand says he doesn't have it, ask him what kind of joint he's running and go get the magazine at another newsstand. come through two-thirds of a weird science fiction story, a dream voyage by Dr. Philip Sargent to a planet in the middle galaxy, a planet not seen by our astronomers, but not a dream voyage, according to him. He believes that it was an actual voyage to a small planet, which is the way station for the souls of the dead. Well, we have heard him speak with his dead wife, Helen, and with Prince Baltos, what of Lord Z? Mrs. Sargent? Why, Lord Z, I'm flattered. What is it? Uh, you realize that my assistant, Prince Maltos, has become attracted to you? Oh, yes, he said as much. I, I told him he was foolish. Oh, he seems to be missing from Intrastar. Do you know where he is? I really do not. Did he mention a trip 
next year. Oh, well, years from now, after my soul is implanted in the body of an unborn who will become a, a beautiful woman. I see. Then he will descend to earth and... Uh, yes, yes, yes. That would be his second such adventure. Another trip to earth would be forbidden. There are those who rule even me and Baltos. If he defies our higher authority, he will suffer for it. Um, may I ask another question? Where is Baltos now? Well, he has gone to Earth to help Phil, my husband. As I suspected. Baltos curries favor with you by helping your husband. An outstanding mind, by the way. To prove what he has learned about interest are. Isn't that it? I know. Phil accepts that immortality and reincarnation are fact. Mm, but he can't prove his discovery. Baltos intends to provide proof. Oh, what a foolish God. He longs for a human relationship. Oh, forgive him, Lord Z. Ah, would that I could, but I cannot. He will be punished. And you will never see your husband again. In the morning, I will assign you to the body of an unborn, and you will leave interest. Ah. I won't see Phil again? No. Oh. Evening, Mr. Dennison. Good evening. You get through the night all right? Yes, sir. Here, let me take your coat. Thank you. How is he? Mm -hmm. Seems just fine. Uh, kind of worked up. Says that man is coming back tonight. Uh-huh. I'll be in the kitchen if he needs me, Mr. Dennison. All right. Hello, Phil. Oh, Paul. Uh, sit down. Can I fix you anything? Uh, no. No, thanks. I don't know how long we'll have to wait. I, I want to thank you for coming over. I've been thinking about it all day. If Baltos isn't a fiction, I'd like to see him again. My mind's open as far as I can. Is storm outside? No. It's a clear night. That was thunder, wasn't it? How could it be? What kind of phenomenon... Good evening, gentlemen. Good Lord. Prince Baltos. Oh, doctor, did you hear that clap of the... Mother of mercy, it's him. Good evening, Mrs. Buckley. Uh, how did you get in? I simply appeared. Why don't you sit down? Another witness besides Mr. Dennison would be desirable. Don't you think so, Dr. Sergeant? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, do sit down, Mrs. Buckley. Oh, yes, yes, sir. What? What's that on the coffee table, Doctor? It, it's moving. No, no, Mrs. Buckley. Don't be frightened. Huh? It can't move, but it moves within itself. Don't be afraid. Dr. Dennison? Uh, yes. Have you ever seen this kind of plant anywhere on Earth? No. Look. It's eating itself. It's the devil's work. Not at all. It is a plant that grows only on Intrastar. It eats its leaves. As one leaf grows, another eats it. The plant never grows in size. It lives forever on itself. Satisfied. Mr. Dennison. I... Don't believe what I'm seeing. Now, Mr. Dennison, will you examine this? Well, it... It looks like lunar rock. It is similar in some ways, but it is not from the moon. I offer both the carnivorous, self-perpetuating plant and this rock sample to you, Mr. Dennison, to convince you that Dr. Sargent's remarkable discovery of Intrastar is a fact. Are you convinced? If I can believe my eyes, yes. Mrs. Buckley? Well, I, I just don't know what anybody's talking about. Prince Baltus, how can I thank you? You have taken an enormous risk. Does Lord Z know? Lord Z is a kindly, patient old god. Yes, I have violated the rules that govern interest are, but I have no fear. I can persuade Lord Z that despite proving to Mr. Dennison that you have experienced what you said you had, mankind won't believe you. So no harm is done. The secret of life will remain a secret. 
except to you three. Well, I, uh, I'm stunned. Frankly, so am I. Why, Prince Baltus, did you decide to help me? I have a distant plan I intend to carry out. But I've overstayed my visit. Goodbye. Look, Doctor, look at him. I I can't project myself back into space. I look. He's beginning to age. Paul. Paul, look at him. Yeah. His face is sagging. And his hair is turned white. He's bent over. Like an old man. Lord Z, what what have you done to me? What's happened? I'm changing into a human being. No, no. Sit down, Prince. He's changed me into a human. Th- thousands of years old. I, I'll turn to dust. It's horrifying, Phil. And look at the plant. It's dying. And the rock is ashes. Oh, you'll excuse me. I, I can't stay here any longer. What do we do with him, Phil? Nothing. There is nothing to be done. Mrs. Sergeant. Who? Oh, Prince Baltos. What? What happened to you? Lord Z turned me into a human, and I disintegrated. And now you're. You're a disembodied soul? Yes. Return to Intrastar for reassignment. But, but you're a god. No longer, Mrs. Sergeant. Lord Z, in the name of the immortals, why did you do this to me? Why have you destroyed me? It was ordained. I warned you, Baldos. You have disobeyed the gods twice. There is no third chance. You were changed into a human and killed. Your soul is immortal. To what unborn will I be assigned? To someone on earth who will lead a life of deception and trickery. That will be part of your punishment. And Helen? Helen Sergeant? She has already departed from Intrastar. Look around you. Gone. Her soul has already been implanted in an unborn. Spare, Dr. Sergeant. I accept my punishment, but Sergeant... Too late. Will I see him here? No. And after I have now spoken, you won't see me. Mrs. Buckley. Oh, be right there. Oh, here's some hot coffee. Yes, I... Uh, I don't feel very well this morning. Oh, with all that crazy business last night, I don't wonder. The devil's work, I call it. Mrs. Buckley, you, you don't believe what you saw and heard last night? If I did. And I'm not saying I do. I couldn't tell anybody about it. Nobody'd believe me. It was true all the same. Well, anything more I can do for you... Why, you haven't eaten your nice fried egg. No, no, no appetite. I don't feel well. Would you telephone Mr. Dennison? I, I have to see him. Why, of course. Land's sake. I'll be happy when all this nonsense is behind me. And so will I. And I think it is about to be. Oh, no. Dear Lord. He's dead. Oh. He said he, he didn't feel so good. After I telephoned you, I, I cleaned up the kitchen. Then I come into the dining room and... and Poor Phil. Oh, why did he have to go fooling around with his dreams and his soul and those those trips he said he made? Uh, Mrs. Buckway, have you been in his study this morning? No, sir. Not since last night when that prince was here with that terrible plant and the rock. I want to see what finally happened to him. Follow me. Well, didn't he disappear the way he come? No. He began to change before our eyes. He began to age. Well, he sure ain't here now, Mr. Dennison. Oh. Look. Why, it, it's a 
pile of dust on the seat of that lovely old winged chair. That's all that remains of Prince Baltos. Oh, it's like after a cremation. What did all this mean, Mr. Dennison? I don't know, Mrs. Buckley. I really don't know. Welcome to Interstar, Dr. Sergeant. Why did I have to die, Lord Z? You had penetrated the secret of immortality. But as Baltus said, no one believed me. Why was I selected to make my discovery? Mm, a touch of genius, I would say. The explanation is better left to those who oversee even me. And here I am because Prince Baltus fell in love with my wife. Oh, what about her, Lord Z? Helen? I know what you're thinking, and I will intercede for you. Perhaps in other bodies you will be united. We'll see. Thank you. <laughs> it's a funny thing. Mm. Love? It's the one thing, the one emotion, over which you and the hierarchy of gods, just to give them a name, seem to have no control. Yes, we know that, Dr. Sergeant. We also know why. Oh? Well, tell me. Because love is the mystery of life. A mystery even to us. Yeah, that's a pronouncement I do understand. So do you, I'm sure. Another observation. 2,500 years ago, in the Book of Rites, Confucius wrote... Do not take liberty with the gods or weary them. Dr. Sargent did and died because he did. Of course, Prince Baltos was the real cause of it. He fell in love with Helen Sargent's ghostly body and freed soul. Love. What an explosive little word that is. I'll return shortly. of the macabre led us into the world of fantasy. All of us dream. In dreams, I know that my subconscious ranges everywhere. I'm sure it's the same with you. Because life is a mystery, our imaginations search for an explanation. It is somewhere out there in the infinite universe. And out there, perhaps there is an intrastar in the middle galaxy. Who knows? Our cast included Norman Rose, Bryna Rayburn, Robert Dryden, and Gordon Heath. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. You're the DA, and I want you to see something for yourself. Something to do with the five spot, obviously. That's right. Oh, you're all alike, you newspaper guys. Every one of you trying to sniff out some scandal of your very own. The whole world isn't corrupt, Tom. <laughs> well, you're entitled to your opinion. Look at your desk. Papers all over it, and every one about some kind of ripoff. That's why you got the job you've got. I got the same kind of job. Exposed phonies and hypocrites. Those who make promises to break them. Mm-hmm. What's the uh, soapbox speech got to do with a five-spot restaurant? Ah, oh, if I told you, you wouldn't believe it. I want you to see him for yourself. See who? Paul Galvano. I've seen him 50 times. No, you haven't. Yes, I've been in his restaurant. Well, that's not what I mean. Well, what do you mean? Paul Galvano doesn't exist. The guy who calls himself Paul Galvano has been dead for three years. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.